George Hotz, he made a name for himself by unlocking Apple's iPhone. George Hotz is one of the craziest hackers in modern history. Doing criminal stuff's not really worth it. I want a uh, super intelligent AI girlfriend and I want fully immersive virtual reality. He's been quietly building a company around the promise of bringing self-driving cars to the masses for the last eight years. By the end of the decade, we will let a car drive across a city without a human in it. Every other serious company in the industry has billions of dollars to throw at this problem, but not George Hotz. Everyone wants to get rich quick, but they don't think about what the potential downsides of this are. He has figured out how to make almost any car drive itself for the price of a cell phone. I want to win self-driving car. The road to self-driving has been extremely windy. I wanted to see for myself how much progress George has made on this project over the last decade. So I bought a Comma 3X and drove to San Diego to meet up with him and see his operation firsthand. George Hotz, he was always hacking things as a kid. When he was just five years old, he wrote his first computer program on his dad's Apple II. And by fifth grade, he was building his own video game console using electronic parts from Radio Shack. He was even featured on the Today Show after he built a robot that could construct a 3D map of the surrounding environment. George, yeah. tell me a little bit about your invention. Well, I made a robot. It like maps out rooms and stuff. There's a military application as well. Like they can send it into a complex before the military infiltrates it. And then they know exactly where to go in, like know where all the rooms are laid out. George made national news when he became the first person to ever unlock an iPhone so it could work with any carrier. The iPhone was factory locked to AT&T, but George had a T-Mobile plan. Hi everyone, I'm Gio Ott. This is the world's first unlocked iPhone. I went home and looked at my T-Mobile SIM and put it in and it said invalid SIM. So ever since then, I've been trying to make my iPhone work with T-Mobile. He was just 17 years old at the time. The video of him explaining the hack got 2 million views on YouTube, and this was back in 2007. Steve Jobs even commented on the incident, and Steve Wozniak sent George a congratulatory email. This was just the beginning, though. George Hotz, aka Geo Hot, and he was the first person to jailbreak an iPhone. And last month, he was the first one to fully hack the PS3 console. He released this code online along with a how to video and now finds himself embroiled in a legal battle. If companies want to put these security measures on these devices, great, good for them. But if we want to come in and we want to remove these security measures so we can do legal things with our devices, then I think we have every right to, and I guess that's my cause. So they got into a lawsuit, and George responded in an absolutely hilarious way. He posted a diss track calling them out for attacking him. Yo, it's Geo High. And for those that don't know, I'm getting sued by Sony. It was a messy situation, but George had the support of the hacker community. So eventually they settled the lawsuit and he agreed not to hack any more Sony products. 2015 was a big year for artificial intelligence. DeepMind was making big progress in key areas of machine learning. And don't forget, this was the year that OpenAI was founded. Self-driving cars were starting to look like a reality, and every automotive executive started making ambitious claims about how quickly they would be rolling out full self-driving capabilities. Elon was one of the first to really push the field forward at Tesla. A friend approached me and he's like, do you want to meet with uh, Elon Musk? He's looking for somebody to build a vision system. This is when they were still on AP1. They were still using Mobileye. Elon back then was looking for a replacement. He brought me in and we talked about a contract where I would deliver something that meets Mobileye level performance. Uh, I would get paid $12 million if I could deliver it tomorrow and I would lose $1 million for every month I didn't deliver. But George had a different idea of what the future could look like. He thought that Tesla was essentially building the iPhone of self-driving cars, a closed system that couldn't be modified by the owner of the car. George has always been focused on empowering individuals to use technology however they want. Unlocking the iPhone let people use whatever carrier they wanted, and jailbreaking the PS3 let people run any software they wanted. George wanted to build the Android of self-driving and make autonomous cars accessible to everyone. He started Kama almost a decade ago now, so I wanted to see how his company works firsthand. So I went to their headquarters and sat down with George to discuss his company and the future of self-driving. Okay, so right now we are driving down to San Diego in this, I think it's like a 2020 Hyundai Palisade. I actually bought this car because of George Hotz. <laughs> um, I was looking for a new car and I went to his website and found the car that was uh, like high, most highly recommended by the Kama team. <laughs> so right now we're driving down to San Diego to see him, but we're using the stock system. So we're using the system that comes with the Hyundai Palisade. It's just, it has lane keep assist, so it's keeping me in the lane and then it has adaptive cruise control. 
so it's kind of cruising. I need to turn up the speed a little bit, but um, but basically, like it's pretty good. Like I have my hands off the wheel. I'm very interested for our drive back when we'll be using the comma because the stock system is pretty good, and I'm wondering how much of a step up the comma system is. This relaxing San Diego office is where the company manufactures the Comma 3X. The product marks a shift from developer kits to consumer product and is way easier to set up, especially if you're non-technical. The device has cameras, microphones, GPS, and Wi-Fi, everything you need to connect to the car and take over steering and acceleration. So originally my plan was, okay, I'm gonna make autopilot and I'm gonna sell to the car manufacturers. So I didn't realize that the uh, hard part of that was uh, not the make autopilot part. The hard part of that was the sell to the car manufacturers part. And you look at a company like Mobileye and you realize that Mobileye spends more money on business development than they do in R&D. That was kind of how I got the idea for the business model. I'm like, well, let's just get this out to people. And then now we have a whole army of people basically working for us, rooting for us to solve self-driving cars. George's company produces two main products. The first is the actual device, which you can buy on their website. The 3X is really a refinement to the 3. We use half the parts. It has half the components. How do yeah. you do the same thing with less parts? Yeah, most of it's not even with functionality reduction. Mm -hmm. A lot of it's just like we redesigned the power architecture to use two rails instead of four. So we have two modes in the device. There's chill mode and experimental mode. Um, if you're mostly doing highway driving, chill mode functions a lot more like a traditional ACC. Experimental mode though, hands over the lateral control of the car, uh, longitudinal control of the car, the gas and the brakes, mm -hmm. completely to the neural network. So the lateral is already completely controlled by the neural network. Where your car decides to go, there is no lanes, roads, anything like that. It is entirely just asking the neural network, where do I go? The second is the open source software that runs on the device. It's called OpenPilot, and because it's open source, it can be modified by anyone who wants to change how the software works for free. Already we have some people on our forums talking about building them, porting them to the old Tesla that didn't have autopilot. That's the really great thing about it being open. Those other cars that we don't support, people can download our code and add support for them. This has allowed Comma to scale compatibility to hundreds of different car models without actually needing to buy every car that they integrate with. I love that with Comma, I have flipped the whole you own the software thing on your head. So back on the iPhone, I'm, I'm the guy, you know, okay, jailbreak the iPhone, right? And then you own the iPhone. Now I'm on the other side of that. I'm like, you're the company, you own the software. I just flipped it. I flipped it. I'm on That's the other funny. side of that. Yeah. And you, you know that something I think, you know, you know that something's a really good idea when you're on both sides of it and still think it's an awesome idea. I walked around the parking lot at George's office to see the cars that they used to test the product. And then I installed my Comma 3 in my own car. The device is pretty simple. It just takes in streams of data from the outside world through the cameras and sensors, and then outputs control signals through a port under your steering wheel. Pretty much every new car ships with a standard port these days, so it's relatively easy to add an aftermarket kit like the Comma when you want to add self-driving features to a vehicle. Most of the driving is done by the algorithm right on this device. Yeah. And it's, it's deep learning, right? It's deep learning. It uses the camera to try to predict what a human would do in this situation. Right, right. And if it predicts something reasonable, it has an internal test of reasonability. If it predicts something reasonable, it takes that path. The Comma 3X is the first one to ship with Navigate and OpenPilot. You can type in a destination, and it's like an early era FSD. We have a video from last November where it drove from downtown San Diego to Taco Bell, making turns, stopping at red lights, stopping at stop signs. That's incredible. Yeah, my, yeah. my stock Hyundai, uh, Hyundai Palisade does not do that. After we finished installing the comma, we went out to test it on the road. Yeah. Yeah, it is very chill. And you'll see also, it's, it can do quite a bit more than highways. So if you're on like country roads, a yellow line, it'll move over for cars, yeah. it'll, it'll do a lot. What you experienced was much more of the autopilot style features. Yeah. Uh, there are FSD style features that you can enable. Uh, they will slowly trickle down. Uh, our business model does not involve uh, charging you more and more for the software. The software is free. Yep. It's open pilot. And, and that's the technology that I want to build. I want to build technology that like, when you use it, it's so simple. Yeah. But what actually goes under the hood in that device is unbelievably complex. Yeah. George is also working on new projects. He calls this one the body. You can mount a comma device to the top of the body and then basically have a simple robot at your disposal. 
Right now, it's mostly a development platform for people to hack on, but it's a cool extension of the core technology Comma has built. Right now, it is literally just a Comma 3 on a pole with two wheels. It balances, keeps the Comma 3 up there, and like there's so much you could do with that already. The prototype is pretty basic, but you can imagine where this goes over time. This thing could just competently wander around a space and take pictures and, you know, focus in on things, send you a text message when someone's trying to break into your building, you know, like, like this could already do so much, of course, but the software's not there yet. He's been on Lex Friedman three times and clearly thinks deeply about so many different topics. Humanity is going to slowly hand control over to the AI. There'll be some people who, for various religious reasons, want to keep um, the human line around. So do you, do you not believe in like job displacement from AI, any of that stuff? I think the trends are just gonna continue as they were. Yeah. I don't think that, I think that almost all trends are going to continue perfectly into AI because I don't think there really is anything called AI. I think that AI has been this gradual thing that's happened over the last 70 years. It's just called the computer revolution. Sure. The whole progression of software yeah. has been a replacement of jobs. There's no magic when you hit AI. I've had this like just thought in my mind where it's like, I want the AI doomers to shut up at least until I have a self-driving car. The way that I know that we're gonna get self-driving cars before an AI that could potentially murder humanity is an AI that could potentially murder humanity has to, in a way, not just be smarter than an individual human, but smarter than all of humanity. Yeah. So in order to get a self-driving car, you just need AI that's smarter than a single human. The biggest risk that we face as a civilization is artificial intelligence. Once there is awareness, people will be extremely afraid. I'm not sure it presents any particular threat that previous weapons have not. It's just about how the people are gonna use the technology. Now, if Elon Musk is calling for an international arms control regulation, he should look at history and see how well that has worked. I certainly think that it's incredibly premature to talk about any sort of government level AI regulation. He hasn't raised that much venture capital, but he's still managed to build something really impressive. The faster a company comes up, the faster that company will fall. Mm -hmm. I have a staff that manufactures yeah. these devices, right? George, you could go to China, you could scale it up. Yeah. At what point does your company own you? Explain to me exactly what I would do with money, right? These things are, can money buy me fully immersive VR? Can money buy me an AI girlfriend? It can't. There's actually very little things that money can buy you. I had a great time hanging out with George at Kama's headquarters. After a full day there, it was time to drive back to Los Angeles. On the drive down, I used the stock system in my car, but on the way back, I tried to let Kama do all the driving. It's obviously hard to quantify the improvement exactly, but I figured a few hours of testing would give me a solid feeling about the value of the product. So we're halfway to Los Angeles from San Diego, and so far, it's been pretty good. It did do an, an unexpected lane change at one point, but it was fine. Mostly it's just really nice to not need to wiggle the wheel and not need to check in with the system. Like it, it watches me, it does the driver monitoring through the camera. As long as I'm looking at the road, it knows that I'm paying attention and I can just sit back. So I'm, I'm much less worried about hovering on the brake, hovering on the gas, like just any other input for just, you know, 10 minutes at a time, I'm not even really, you know, considering what's going on with the system. It's very, very mellow. Just in terms of actually making this drive more enjoyable, it's 100% more, more, like easier than on the drive down. I've spent a few weeks now with the Comma 3X and can confidently say that I love the product. I don't own any stock in George's company and I don't get a kickback if you go and buy one. This is just my honest opinion. I wasn't expecting the upgrade to be that significant over the stock system, but it's much better in practice. If you have a compatible car, it seems like a great value for the price, and it's fun to support what George is working on. Teslas are still obviously great, but for certain people, they won't make sense. I would personally just love to see Tesla and SpaceX succeed because that's the kind of world I want to live in. You know, it comes right. back to the pie argument, right? I'd rather Elon Musk have a much bigger share of the pie than me, as long as the pie tastes awesome. Cruz and Waymo have also built amazing services, but those are pretty limited at the moment. It's great to have a wild card in the industry shipping a functional product so quickly. If you want to learn about the history of Cruz, just check out this video next. Thanks for watching.